Hi, I'm Trevor Conkergood of Sunset Stitches. This is part one of a two-part video about what's new in Genomi Digitizer software on version three. I've produced several DVD video guides on how to use Genomi Digitizer software, and if you'd like to learn more about those video guides, please visit my website called sunsetstitches.com. In this two-part series, I'm going to show you what's new in the new version of the Digitizer program, and I won't have time to show you every single thing that's new, and I certainly won't have time to teach you how to use those features, but what I'd like to do is just try and show you what I consider are the most impressive new features in Genomi's Digitizer software version 3. So if you're ready to get started, here's the video. Well, there's several new things that have been added to the desktop in version 3, and so I thought I'd start by just highlighting the new things on the desktop. And probably the most notable change is now we have a filter to select your machine. And I'll go ahead and just select the MC10000. And then you can choose from all the different hoops that are available for the MC10000. And you'll notice that they've now added the Giga Hoop to the digitizer software and I actually created a DVD just about using the Genomi software to prepare designs for the Giga Hoop and the Macro Hoop so that's something new as well. Uh, we have a new toolbars down at the bottom this alignment toolbar is new this is a layout toolbar and this is a combining toolbar and I plan to come back and talk about those new toolbars and show some of the ways that you can use them. Um, I should also probably mention, and perhaps what I'll do is just choose to save this design, even though there's nothing on it, um, just so that I could highlight the list of formats that you can save to. So as you can see, there's many formats, and I believe there's a few new formats also in version 3. And one thing I wanted to start out by saying is if you're not sure what version you have currently, under the Help drop-down menu, we have About Digitizer. And this is where you can find out what version you're currently running. And I'm running version 3.0N, which was released November 2009. So um, that's a little bit about the desktop in version 3 of Digitizer Software. In version 3, there are several new fonts available. And so I'll just highlight them quickly. Um, this set of fonts, Micro Block, Helvetica Small, small high tower and time small were all designed with the idea of making even smaller embroidery and so if you're using uh, micro embroidery you can get some of these letters to stitch out as small as two and three millimeters tall it looks amazing um, just scrolling down I also have here um, several of the different script fonts that have been added so we now have Ballantine script flare script script one Karen script and Royale script and so that's great because they're all very nice and decorative uh, fonts to work with. And also newly added fonts are these three um, Japanese style um, or Asian style fonts. And I'm sorry, I don't know what they say. I just typed in a few of the characters to show them. But um, so those are the new fonts that have been added from version three. And one more thing that's new about lettering in version three, and I'll just attempt to demonstrate. If I select a letter and go to the reshape, You'll notice now that if I select one individual letter, I can actually resize that individual letter or rotate that one individual letter. And um, so that's something that was added in version 3 as well. Now I'm going to show you a super cool new tool called Offset Object found here on the editing toolbar. And it's gray at the moment. But once I uh, create an object, like a circle, and then select that object, you'll notice that this tool becomes available and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And what it gives us the ability to do is to create new um, objects with the same shape and I'm going to just set it at one new offset. I'm going to set the offset distance at zero and say OK. And you'll see here in my object list that I've got the circle that I created and now it's created a new object around it in the, exactly the same shape. And I could select that object and change its properties from a single running line into let's say a satin line and then you'll see that um, it's created a satin border around that circle and I guess if I wanted to I could change the color so that it would be a little bit more apparent but once you learn to use this tool you'll see there's all sorts of really cool um, uses and for example I'm going to select this word Janome choose the offset object and I'm going to ask it to create 10 new offsets 10 new objects uh, with an offset count of let's say two millimeters apart and say okay and so you can see here now that it's created around the word Janome several times over and over new objects and 
Each one of those objects could be modified to be any type of line from a candle wicking line to a satin border to the, all the different new stitch types that I'll be showing you in a moment. So that's the new tool, very fun and cool, called Offset Object. The next new feature I'd like to show you is called Make Motif. And I actually designed this heart shape that's filled in with a motif fill of hearts and a motif outline of hearts from this simple little object of a heart right here that I had digitized. And what I did was selected this object that I created. It was a simple satin stitch heart and just choose embroidery and make motif. And what we can do here is create our own new motif set. And in this case, we'll just call it heart. But you could call your motive set anything you want. And inside of there, I get to give this motive a name. So again, I'm just going to call it heart. And now we'll go ahead and say OK. And it asks me to define the sort of shape of the heart along a baseline. So I just click two points. And now I've created a new motive. And just to show you, if I was to choose the motive running line and digitize a line, now our heart is placed along that line. And of course, you could reshape those hearts to space anywhere along the line you want. And similarly, if I was to choose and create um, a piece of motive fill, I'll just draw a shape and then select that shape and choose to have it be from the pattern set that we created, which was called heart. And there's the heart that we designed. And now my motive background will be filled in with those little hearts that we just designed. So that's how I was able to create this quick and easy design of a motive heart. And just to show you, there's all sorts of things you can do. Um, I quickly made up my initials, which are Trevor Howard Conquergood, and took my initials and made them apply in a background. So there's lots and lots of great features uh, that you can use in version 3, including Make Motive. Another new feature in version 3 is the ability to create your own stippled background fill. And it's super easy to use. So what I'll do is just go ahead and um, draw a box so that you can see if I draw any shape box or any object you want, select that and come to here for the stippling tool. When I turn it on, I have the ability to change all of these settings from the stitch length to the minimum length, the chord gap, and the loop settings. And when we say OK, it automatically converts that shape into a stippled background. Now, perhaps what you might like to do is create um, a background that has a design in the middle of it like I did with this heart down here. So um, maybe what I'll do is just select that heart and copy it onto my clipboard and then paste one, paste it down and move it up and put it on top of that fill background. And now I can do what's called edit and remove overlaps. And what that did was, you'll notice here, if I just make this heart slightly smaller, you can see that it actually cut out a hole in the background where the heart was. And that's really great because now I can simply select that background and then choose to convert it to stippling and you'll see that we quickly have a piece of stippled fill that fits nicely around an embroidery design. So one of the new features is stippled fill. Now I'm going to continue looking at the new types of fill stitches in version 3. And if I fly open the tool for the circle, you'll see that we now have contour fill and radial fill as our new options. And I'll select contour fill and simply draw a circle and show you that the stitches travel around the shape. They contour around the shape of the circle. And with radial fill, the stitches are going to turn around that shape in around the center of that circle in a radial pattern. And perhaps what I'll do is select the circle, open up its properties, and show you that under the radial fill tab, there's actually dozens and dozens of different patterns that you can apply in the background of your radial fill. And so I'll go ahead and change the pattern of my background of my radial fill. And of course, you can draw any shape with these tools. So for example, here's some irregular shapes drawn with the contour fill and the radial fill tools. Well, this is awesome. I hope you're learning lots about Janome's digitizer software and what's new in version 3. And we've reached the end of the first part of the video and it's time to switch over and watch part 2.